Good evening and welcome to a new episode of Bahrain Now, your weekly show that covers the latest local developments and highlights talents and pioneering initiatives. Join us as we learn more and how we can give back to our community as we also get to meet a famous YouTuber. All of that right here with your host Bara Abdallah on Bahrain Now. A well-known video creator and YouTuber with over 1 million subscribers. Get to know him and his life behind the scenes in the following report by Mariam al -Bayati. I am ready. YouTuber or a content creator is a videographer or an entertainer who is capable of producing videos for the video sharing website YouTube. These content creators are also considered influencers. Content creation is said to be the material people contribute to the online world. Abdullah Al Naimi, a content creator, has been growing and sustaining a loyal audience with his unique and out of the box content. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Mariam Al Bayati. Thank you for watching. So now delving into the world of YouTuber with the superstar Abdullah Naimi. Hi, how are you? I'm good. I'm doing fine. Amazing. How amazing. about you, brother? I'm great. You're That's here good. today yeah. with the star yourself. Yes. Part of YouTube world. So. Now, um, a lot is happening. YouTube is becoming like more of a big thing for everybody and a lot of people are entering YouTube. And now we have what we call superstars, influencers. So yeah. to you right now, do you call yourself a YouTuber, a creator? What is that? Uh, I think, first of all, it, it's content creation. So I'm, I'm a content creator. All right. I think this is the best definition I can say about my job. Okay. Yeah. Uh, being an influencer, mm. I think that word is misleading. Misleading. Yeah, we don't influence people a lot. Mm. Some of us do, maybe not me. Okay. I hate calling myself an influencer. Huh. Being a content creator is something I really enjoy. So I'm a content creator. Content creator. Yes. So that's your full-time job, I would say? It's your business? It's your hobby? What is it? Yeah, yeah, it is. Being a full-time YouTuber is mm. my current job with being a CEO of my own company. Okay production company so it's the same field uh, actually it's like creating content right. and video production and stuff like that but it goes across each other hmm. so we do both in the company so yeah okay okay I mean I remember when I actually passed by your company right and uh, your production team yes it's just amazing to see because a lot of people think some youtubers is just like at a bedroom with a camera some of them are, right. <laughs> yeah, some of them are. Actually, most of them. Most of them. Yeah, most of them. So YouTubers aren't, aren't a businessman. They don't have diploma in media or something. They are just normal guys who wanted to create some content on mm -hmm. the web. And okay. most of us are. Uh, me personally, I, I've chosen this field because I got into YouTube All right. and I loved the content creation part of it. All right. So I wanted to go more. And YouTube Amazing. is kind of limitless. Okay. But sometimes to do professional work, you have yeah. to change field a little bit. Huh. But in the same direction. I mean, it's interesting because a lot of people keep saying that, oh my God, Abdullah Naim is one of those big YouTubers, not only in Bahrain, but you know, even in the Middle East, to the point yeah. that you had to leave your morning job. Yeah, I do. You know, yeah. <laughs> a seven to eight exactly. regular job, yeah. safe <laughs> job, I would say. Yeah, know? exactly. It's and a safe job, yeah. Leaving all of that, to pursue your passion as a YouTuber, exactly, yeah. which is not really a guarantee for anybody to make it. Uh, first of all, I wanted to get out of my comfort zone okay. and to do something I'm passionate about. Something makes me happy every day. Okay. Going to work every morning is something I'm very excited about, even though I'm tired <laughs> the whole day, <laughs> but I'm doing something that I like. Actually, I'm not that popular in Bahrain, mm. but in the MENA region, I'm much more bigger there. 
Okay. So to create content with my Bahraini accent <laughs> to do this stuff, <laughs> okay. it's actually something I'm proud of. I'm, I represent my country a lot. Amazing, yeah. amazing. So now what I understood is that for the first two years, you were like uploading on daily basis. Yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> and not, I don't know, you, like from what I understood, you didn't get much views the first two years. But yeah, then, I didn't. Like, I didn't. like you were working so hard creating content and you're gonna go crazy with your content every day between yeah. once or twice a day yeah, for two yeah, years? Yeah, yeah that's true. Uh, <laughs> I was uploading twice a day on okay. daily basis. Sometimes even more than that. Really? I was so excited and happy from making content that I made even more than twice a day. Okay. Um, as I said, it's something I got passionate about. All right. So doing it wasn't about money at the time. Mm. Right now it's my full-time job and I have to make money off it yeah. uh, and I think it's very fair because I put a lot of time and work and yeah. a lot of s things into it That's just but fair. then I think <laughs> I put a lot of time more <laughs> because I, I wasn't getting views there was no money okay there was no fans wow no TV interviews <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you there are was, yeah there was nothing but I did it for the for the love of it okay it was amazing and you were mostly known back then for being a soccer commentator. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you do reactions of soccer matches. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's actually actually I started as a gamer. Okay. Yeah, I started as a gamer, as a FIFA gamer, FIFA playing okay. yeah, okay. playing playing football uh, for my videos. All right. And I saw no interactions from fan. No one got interested in my content because <laughs> right. it was similar to the thousands of content creators that make. FIFA videos. All right. So I actually created this genre. It's uh, the football reaction genre. All right. I was the one who started it in nice. the Middle East. And after two years of uploading daily, it changed in a month. Yeah, huh. I got to 100K in a month and it was an explosion for my channel. A huge success, uh, success in, in one night. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. I mean, that, you know, because a lot of people when they go into YouTube and they upload for like the first three, four, five months and they don't get results, they yeah, get I, demotivated. Four or five videos, I think. Not <laughs> because if someone can stay for four or five months and he can daily upload or can d uh, d uh, upload on, on a basis, weekly basis, let's say, yeah. he will continue. Okay. He will continue. But some people get bored after like three or four videos. Because it's hard, YouTube is hard. It's not mm -hmm. easy. It's not like Instagram that you will upload a photo or make a one minute video. Yeah. You have to make full video, like a 10 full minutes. Production. Yeah. Full it's, production. it's very hard. It's very hard. It's interesting to see that, you know, as you enter the YouTube world for two years and then you got into a workshop and yeah. that changed your perception of YouTube and how to become a YouTuber. But then you changed even your genre and your style. Yeah. What made you do that? Changing my style of what do you mean? Yeah, as as content goes. As con yeah, sometimes you just get bored. Okay. And sometimes there is no result. And doing the same thing again and again and accepting different results, uh, that's not healthy. It's okay. not gonna change. So you need to change your style, your content. You need to find something new and think out of the box. And that's what I did at the time. And it got it got me the success that I wanted. I mean, million subscribers around the Middle East, yeah. all of them listening to you right now. Yeah. You got people from Saudi Arabia, Iraq, yeah, you yeah, know, everywhere. Egypt, Tunisia, Algeria. Actually, I got a lot of people from uh, uh, Africa, and that's huge. That's crazy. Yeah, because as I said, I'm speaking Bahraini, and <laughs> our accent is not easy for other Arabs, and to be speaking it and people gonna understand me ho the whole time. Yeah. It's something amazing. So, so you're telling me that the Bahraini accent actually is an attractive accent? It's, it's not very understandable okay. because I've gotten with uh, a lot of Egyptian YouTubers, All right. which I understand them very clearly, Yes. but it wasn't that clear for them. All right. So I had to speak English the whole time so All they right. can understand what I was saying. But <laughs> yeah, we got to communicate. You know what's interesting as well is that now with you saying that and telling me about the challenges you're facing right now as changing styles, always keeping up to see what's going on and keeping yeah. your content fresh and interesting yeah. and constant and consistent. Yeah. Now, as fun as it may seem, but is it that challenging to keep those things all happening together? It's very challenging, but I, there is no way that I can explain this in an interview. 
it's, it's something that you have to do every day. YouTube is a daily job, seriously. Yeah. It's, yeah. Like, it's like a routine. It's something you have to do like 10 hours, 12 hours a day. It's very, very challenging. I have to do wow. a lot of stuff. I have to prepare for a lot of stuff. Wow. I have to change my mood for a lot change of stuff. Change your yeah. mood. <laughs> yeah. So there is a lot of things that goes into making a 10 minute video. It's not easy wow. at all. Wow. Otherwise, a lot of people would have made it. Yeah. Yeah. Because a lot of ha have tried to enter the YouTube mm. and they didn't, they didn't continue. Make it. Yeah, they didn't make it. I, I tried YouTube for like four to five months. It was not easy. But man, you're gonna you're gonna go up. Let's go, man. Yeah, you Let's will. Go. You That's will. for sure. That's I for trust sure. in you, I believe in you. We trust you can in do you it. as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's for sure. You can do it, bro. Now, what do you say to people like, because what's happening right now is YouTube is taking more time of kids and even yeah. adults. And to a certain point, even uh, YouTube has been treated like a TV or the new TV. Yeah. So what do you call that right now? Uh, there was an old fashioned media, as we all know, and there is the new media, new media that we actually have no idea what is it. Because mm -hmm. social media have been like for what, 10 years? Pretty much. We don't have that big of experience. I think TV have been like what, 100 years or mm -hmm. 80, 90, more, something yeah. like that. So we have a lot of guidelines that can make a TV, a TV. what TV it is yeah. right now. But social media, it's very different. You have yeah. no idea what's the algorithm. The algorithm. What's, yeah, a lot of stuff <laughs> goes into that. You don't know what people are gonna like after two months, so you have to keep changing every time. Because new people are coming to the to the social media every day, right? And they are bringing something new, right? And you have to do that yeah. to keep going in the social media. It's interesting. It's so interesting what I'm hearing right now. Now, a lot of people when they say YouTube, certain names pops up, whether it's Omar Farooq, yeah. Rajul Joda, Ahmed Sharif, Manal, yeah. Ahmed Sharif, and then of course your name, Abdullah Naimi, shines a lot. Alhamdulillah. As as an example. Um, how YouTube can be very beneficial and yet again a business and a job. Now, what are your tips to the people who are just seeing what you're doing and they say, you know what, I want to do the same and I'm going to be the same and yeah. even better, all that kind of stuff. But for people to enter YouTube, um, what can you tell them? Why are you going on YouTube? This is the first thing I'm going to ask anyone who wants to start a YouTube channel. So you have to define if it is going to be a full-time job in the future or mm. just a hobby you're going to waste your time in it mm. because it's the answer going to change yeah depending on what you are uh, needing from youtube all right uh, the most tip i would give uh, keep uploading okay don't stop uploading because failure is stopping if you want success in youtube you just keep uploading with the new ideas Right. Keep changing, keep creating content. That's going to make you better content creator. That's going to give you an idea how the al algorithm work on YouTube. Mm. There is a lot of stuff you can get just by keep uploading. Even though if you are doing it wrong, mm. eventually you're going to find the right way to right. do it. So right. just keep doing it until you success, as <laughs> it happened for me. Man, yeah. thank you so much for thank the you for having me. Bala. Me, it is a pleasure, and you're the pride, thank I guess, you. of the Bahraini thank YouTube you scene so much, YouTube, right brother. here. We do appreciate you so much for the you talk. Too. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, for all of you who wants to enter YouTube, you heard it. <laughs> Be consistent, keep uploading, and always keep it fresh with your content. Stay tuned with more happening here on Bahrain Now. When we give cheerfully and accept gratefully, everyone is blessed. A Box of Goodness is a charity organization was founded in 2016. Let's watch the following report with Walid El Blushi. A Box of Goodness is a non-profit charity organization founded on the principles sharing our blessing with the less fortunate. We usually struggle to think out of the box, but this time we're going to search inside that box of goodness and find out together how and whom to help. So if you would like to donate, I will show you what we contain in each box. So we put flour, milk powder, five kg of rice, sugar, check this, Dal, oil, 
Sí. Pasta. Coconut milk powder. Spices. Cheese. And if you would like to add some items for the kids, like biscuits, milk, juices, you can add. And those are the items that we accept for donations. We were trying to raise food sanitizers since the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic, around six, seven months now. Uh, we, were, we, had, we got help from many companies and uh, it's all about food, masks, hand sanitizers, uh, health supplies for the families that in need for their stuff. So I could find people who were really in need of help, especially in Ramadan. You know, when people are, are enjoying the month of Ramadan, they really needed this thing and we were so glad that we could provide the supplies to them on time and to the families who really needed help at that time. So we usually we search for people, especially like, you know, who are having very low salary or people who lost their job because of COVID-19. We make a list of those uh, names and then we make sure that we provide the supplies to the needy and the most needed people. I would like many people to join in this act of goodness because I would say you are doing for this life and for the Akhira. Ladies and gentlemen, goodness lay within. And as a human, I'm sure you can feel the joy of giving more than who receive. Our greatness, not in what we have, in what we give. I'm Walid Al Blushi, reporting Bahrain International TV. Today with us is the founder of Box of Goodness, Ms. Shamim Maranti Dol. So, good evening, ma'am. Hi, thank you for having me over. It's a blessing to have you here. Thank you. So, the Box of Goodness, tell us about it. So, a Box of Goodness was founded in 2016 uh, by myself and a few other expats. Uh, women in, in Bahrain. Right. Um, it started off with the concept of uh, creating a habit. Mm. So what we used to do was we used to try to get people to create a habit of having a box in their house and on a daily basis to put away something that they wanted to share with someone who was in need. Okay. So um, they say that when you repeat an action it builds a habit. Right. So we wanted to build a habit of giving. Right. So that was where it all came from um, and we, we always ask people to donate in kind to us because we're mm. an unregistered charity. Uh, we always ask people to either donate their time, uh, their efforts uh, or food, clothing. Um, we have a lot of people when they're leaving Bahrain, yeah. um, they give us um, like uh, kitchen items, right. furniture. Um, all clothing, toys, all of these things which are in good condition, which can be shared with someone uh, less less fortunate family. Right. We always take it take it in. Yes. Great. Yeah. Great. So, what inspired you to actually think of the box of goodness? Um, um, the well, uh, it's it's a figurative. Uh, sense. I mean, yeah. there's there's no physical box that you right. need to donate into. Right. Uh, it was just that you know, uh, whenever we we donated something, we either put it in like a um, a cardboard box All or right. something. It's it's something. It, it's a form of endearment that you share with someone. Mm. So this was the whole concept that it's a box of goodness that um, that would make someone happy. Okay. Yeah. So it doesn't always have to be something new that you're donating. Okay. It could always be something that is useful to somebody. Um, it always in a good condition. We always mm. uh, ask our donors to share something which is in, in a reusable condition. Okay. Um, and and the thing is that even though it's uh, it's it's a secondhand item, it always makes somebody very happy. Yeah. Yes. You can yeah. only imagine. So. How does it feel when you do these charitable uh, activities? When you say it makes somebody else happy, 
But mm. what about you? How do you feel about it? Well, I always believe that, um, you know, making someone else happy, yeah. this kind of happiness and this kind of reward, money can't buy. Yes. Uh, and it, it, you really feel good uh, when, when you've, because when they bless you, when they thank you, and when you see them smile, um, this is is priceless is actually priceless. Uh, yeah and we always we always get a lot of our volunteers also to mm. come in and experience this so that then they also want to do it more like you know when you mm. uh, when you partake in something you see things firsthand and yeah. then you you see what it's like and you want to continue doing more and more uh, good yeah amazing amazing yeah. So, I mean, with all the positivity and the blessings and the happiness that takes mm -hmm. place with this work, I'm sure you get challenged sometimes. Um, yes, uh, we, we do have challenges where sometimes, like I keep stressing uh, on gives, give as good as you want to receive. Yeah. But um, that's not always the case. Sometimes we have to... Uh, you know, go through the things that we receive mm. as donations because they're not always in the best of condition to uh, share with someone else. Mm. Um, we also have to remember that someone who is a little less fortunate than yeah. us um, will always feel a pinch. You know, if you if you give them something that's really bad or something oh, wow. dirty, yeah. uh, they all they will feel hurt. Um, yeah. So we we always keep this in mind. We always want to give and share something that is in good condition. Uh, even if it's not brand new, we try br some brand new items. But if not, we always try to maintain that it's in a in a good condition. Um, so the, this is this is one thing that we um, that we find as as an obstacle. Uh, the other things are that um, because we are not a registered charity, mm. we don't have financial funding, okay. uh, and most of our volunteers are also limited with time because they have families, right. they have children, so. Um, we we hundred percent depend on our donors what they donate to us right. and we always work with this so sometimes it's a challenge uh, when we don't have enough because the more we receive uh, the more we are able to um, to sh to share and right. um, to share with the less less fortunate yeah true I mean I mean that takes a lot of your time right you have to yes. go and you have to diagnose the package and yes. the make sure it's like you said, usable and all that. Yeah. So I can only imagine the amount of time you have to put in yeah. to get that working out. So there's a lot of sorting out, and and also because we're not registered, we don't have we don't have our own facility. Oh. So uh, sometimes we have to do it in like one of one of our volunteers' houses okay. or my house, like you know. And it's uh, wow. Yeah. So, uh, but we 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 take it in our stride. Like we don't let anything deter us. Um, but these are these are the little things that we go through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can. <laughs> and the uh. in the in the uh, how do you say uh, behind the lines? Okay, like, yeah, you know. behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah. um, tell us about your team. You know. Yeah. So we are like um, mostly um, females, okay. uh, expats, um, and then but we we work with a lot of local charities as well. Uh, most of them uh, are like some of them are my work colleagues. Some of them are people who um, have written to us. They've seen our work on Instagram or Facebook mm. and they've written to us. So uh, there's a mix of expats and um, um, local uh, ladies. Yes. Uh, most of them, they, they come in as and when they are free uh, right. because most of them have children and uh, like full-time jobs also. Right. So we always try to coordinate uh, and, and see whenever like you know uh, whenever they are free and try to fit in with, mm. with their schedules as well yeah oh wow so yeah. i'm sure it's a fun team right yes you meet <laughs> up from time to time yeah. and it's just a lot can happen any moments you can share with us like a story that you keep telling a lot of people about right, that happened during your work times with well the uh, we we have some like uh, projects that we do on a regular basis which we always look forward to and sadly, due to Corona, we are not mm. able to do this. Uh, and, and this is something that really breaks my heart. Mm. Um, so we work with the Al Sanabal Orphan Care Society in Busetin. Yeah. Uh, we organize uh, bi-monthly birthday parties. Okay. So we have a group birthday party. It's like a big event. Um, we have like games, we have gifts. 
and uh, we invite all the children we have a birthday cake which which they all cut and they have like a like two hours of a lot of games and fun so we do this on a regular basis we've been doing it since 2016 yeah and sadly in 2020 we were able to only have the party once oh. uh, before everything was shut down okay. so this is something mm -hmm. like even even our volunteers love this because they bring their children as well yeah and their children get to mingle with the kids and um, it's it's a fun experience because the kids really enjoy themselves uh, we have it in McDonald's all right and then there's another place recently that we started to have it in it's called Jungle Bounce ah. so it's like a, a big like a amusement park where the children get to like let loose and have fun um, so this this is something that all our volunteers love to have, uh, like look forward to getting involved in because you know it's a party atmosphere <laughs> and the yeah. kids are having fun. So this this is one thing that I always like hold dear to me. Uh, and the other one is our beach cleanup efforts. Like okay. again, because of Corona, we're not able to like go in groups. Yeah. Um, but again, we we encourage a lot a lot of our followers to donate um, to like basically keep the plastic that they consume in in their homes to keep it aside mm. and uh, to either recycle it or to donate it to uh, there's a there's this place in Adelia where you can donate your plastic to it's the I think it's a friends and family of the uh, disabled mm. so uh, this society basically collects plastic and they sell it to the recycling plant. And with these funds, they buy um, wheelchairs for the disabled. Okay. So we, we, whenever we, ha we used to have a beach cleanup and we used to collect the plastic, we used to go and uh, donate it to this center. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. So you're busy. <laughs> I am mean, yeah, busy. And, yeah. and I also have a full-time job. A full-time job. Well, <laughs> yes. you know what? Bless you. <laughs> Thank you. Bless Thank your you. beautiful team. Thank you. And I think I'll be passing by, even me and some of the members of Bahrain TV, sure. we might actually just pass by and just feed off your positive and beautiful energy that Thank you bring you. to you. us right here on the yeah. island of Bahrain. Thank you so much Thank for you. the beautiful effort. We do appreciate you. Now, before we end this conversation, mm. how can we reach you? If ever anybody wants to like to volunteer with activities or yeah. um, products or anything that they can be used yeah. by the less fortunate. Uh, we are on Instagram and Facebook um, at, at a box of goodness. Mm. Um, so you can you can message us and reach out to us. Uh, I'm not going to give up my phone number because <laughs> kind of tends to get abused yeah. uh, mm. in, the, in the way. Uh, but the best way to reach us is to message us on our Facebook or our Instagram. Okay. Yeah. As COVID-19 hit uh, Bahrain, uh, since March, we've been doing a lot of uh, relief efforts. Yes. We've been working with the public, again, with the help of the public and many companies, embassies. Uh, we have been receiving food. We've been receiving uh, masks, mm. uh, toiletries, um, feminine hygiene products, uh, all these kind of things that are useful for the less fortunate people who are losing their jobs. Mm. Uh, it's been we've hard. yeah, we've we've been able to help more than about 1,500 people. Beautiful. Uh, and uh, so I'd like to say that people who like please donate more so yeah. that we can help more people because people are still suffering like mm. people are still continuing to not be able to go back to work or they're losing their job yeah. so this in in 2020 this has been our focal point we've mm. been helping a lot of uh, less fortunate families and individuals who've who've basically not getting paid or they're getting a pay cut or they've yeah. lost their jobs yeah so this is something well, very important for it us. It is, it is. And it does matter a lot, actually, especially in these uh, challenging times yes. with COVID. So um, again, bless you. Thank, Thank you. you so much, you and your team, for Thank keeping you. it up and helping more than 1,000 individuals yes. here on the King of Bahrain. Thank you so much Thank for being with us much. here on Bahrain now. Thank you so much for the... Appreciate you. So ladies and gentlemen, let's give back to the community as we are here with the box of goodness happening here on Bahrain now. Do not forget to join them or reach them out on Instagram. Happening here. Thank you very much.
This is all for tonight and I'll be seeing you next week with more exciting segments. If you have any questions or suggestions, send us a message to our Instagram page or email us on the accounts shown on the screen. Thank you for watching and good night.